Hey, this is Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. Today, I want to tell you about cantilevers and why they're one of the most troublesome building assemblies with regard to uh, heat loss, uh, trouble, keeping the house comfortable, keeping the floors warm, and um, uh, lowering our uh, fuel and electric bills for heating and air conditioning. And this is uh, a cantilever. What is a cantilever? It is where the floor joists hang over a wall to make the upper floor bigger than the lower floor. Now these floor joists can hang over a framed wall like you see here or right over the foundation to where the first floor is bigger than the basement or a second floor is bigger than the first floor like you see here. Cantilevers are a pretty common feature in homes these days because it makes the outside of the house look a little bit more interesting and also you get more floor space on the upper floors. So here this house has two cantilevers in the front we can see from the first floor to the second floor there and we see one on the right uh, in that uh, bonus room sticking out. We see cantilever and those floors are going to be cold uh, on the upper floor and the ceilings are also going to be cold on the lower floor. Of course, nobody notices them because you don't touch the ceiling. But that is all making your house more uncomfortable and costing you money and extra fuel and electric bills. So let me show you the problem. If you come over here, and this, this is obviously, this uh, building is under construction. And so we can see what's going on underneath here. You have um, open uh, floor joist cavities. Now, how do we, you know, this is hanging out here and we got the freezing cold air or uh, warm air, obviously in the summer, warm, humid air. Um, and how do we block this floor from being affected by the outside here? Well, typically what's done is this just take some fiberglass insulation and stick it up there. And then they'll take a soffit material, could be plywood like this. This is just a scrap of plywood and I just want to show you. If this was nailed up here like this, we would have gaps between the edge of the plywood and the outside here, gap between the edge of the plywood in here. And we have air spaces uh, in between this bat and the bottom of the subfloor, between the bat and the soffit. We got edge gaps and so forth. And the cold air permeates this uh, plywood and this uh, fiberglass insulation, which is the worst insulation that there is. We've talked about that on so many different Dr. Energy Saver videos. One type of house that almost always has a cantilever is a raised ranch. And usually they're in the front of the house, sometimes both the front and back. You can see a cantilever there, cantilever there. And that's going to mean some significant energy problems for that homeowner. In fact, sometimes we see they have baseboard heat on the first floor and the baseboard heat pipes that run through the cantilever can freeze because they're so cold inside that cantilever. Let me show you a different kind of cantilever that we see, and that is a combination uh, overhang and cantilever. Now, if you look, you can see this is the first floor wall. It's here. And look at the second floor wall. It's a foot out more. You see that wall up there on the second floor, and that's finished space up there. It's they're, they're offset by a foot, OK? So here we have a soffit with some recessed lights in it. And we have this uh, wainscoting as a soffit board. And so what we know, based on the observation we just made, is that the second floor is a foot bigger than the first floor. And so a foot of this soffit is cantilever, and the rest of it is overhang, OK? We also know we have wainscoting, which has joints, which air can get through. And we have these big holes called can lights that air can go into the can light and up into the soffit because can lights are leaky and around the uh, hole in the wainscoting or in that soffit material um, and up into the soffit and then up into the cantilever. And again, this uh, building assembly is going to make that house uh, have cold floors and people to be uncomfortable. And since you're standing on the floor, I mean, the, the, uh, a room has four walls, a ceiling and a floor. And if any of the surfaces were going to be cold, the floor is the last one you want because you are in contact with that floor with your feet and you're going to feel it. You're going to be uncomfortable and not a happy camper. So how do we fix it? Well, we're smart enough to know that this assembly does not work. Okay, fiberglass, forget it. 
it's not going to work. So we're in, we're in new construction here. They didn't close this soffit yet. We are going to use closed cell spray foam to spray up underneath uh, in between these joists, and then we're going to put the uh, soffit back up there. Now, closed cell spray foam has a greater R value per inch than uh, fiberglass by far, but more importantly, it expands and fills all the gaps so that no air can get around it, get through it, penetrate it, and you're going to have a much better result. In an existing home, we would have to drop the soffit, take that board down, and get up underneath there and install spray foam. Or there's other methods where we can use uh, blocks of board foam. We can use cellulose insulation where we drill a hole in the cantilever and fill it up with cellulose insulation and dense pack it with cellulose. It's also a very good method. And we would choose the method that is right for your home and the least disruptive and most effective for the situation that you have. If you'd like to have your home evaluated by Dr. Energy Saver to see how we can help your existing home be more energy efficient and comfortable, call Dr. Energy Saver. We'd love to help you.